Before I found Brightheart, um, I had been struggling with binge eating disorder, um, eating disorders in general, and disordered eating for the better part of 10 years, for about seven years, um, that it was really sort of identifiable. Um, it ranged from heavy restriction and um, over exercise to turning into binge eating in its uh, most recent iteration. And I had worked with several therapists, really great therapists, um, and had some success with that weekly or twice a week meetings. But at a certain point, things started getting more severe. Um, I encountered sort of like a big life change and I moved um, pretty far away from sort of my home base uh, with my husband. And even though things on the outside were good, I was working and he had a great job and we should have been happy. My eating disorder started getting worse at that point. And it became clear to me after several really, really bad um, episodes that I needed more help. But one of the problems that I encountered was I had moved to a rural area and um, I had previously lived in a major metropolitan area. I had lots of options for treatment, but I had never taken that step. And part of the reason for that was because most of the treatment options I could step into would have required me to quit my job. And that wasn't something I could afford to do. And so um, at this point, when I was about four or three months ago, really starting to think about a higher level of care than working with a therapist, um, I started looking into things like quitting my job. It was, it was that serious. And, um, and I had tried some therapists in my small town, um, people who specialized in eating disorders, psychiatrists, uh, counselors, and I hadn't had success. The, things were just, I was stuck in a cycle, a really awful cycle. Um, and it was hurting me. And it was, I, I really felt like I was getting to that point where my life was at risk. And so when I had that moment of clarity, it became worth it for me to, to quit my job if I needed to, to get better. Um, and so I jumped online and I started looking and there was nothing in my town, absolutely nothing. The closest treatment centers, um, inpatient or outpatient or partial hospital were all about two hours away. And so um, I didn't know if I would be severe enough because I wasn't, you know, at a weight that was uh, risking my health, um, that I would be admitted into an inpatient, which put me in this weird position where I thought that I would probably need intensive outpatient, but that would mean commuting two hours each way or possibly getting an apartment in another town by myself. And it was really overwhelming. But one of the options I found in my research was just listed on psychology today and it was Brightheart. And I saw that it had a Bay Area address, but it listed my small town and its service area. And so I was sort of intrigued by it. Um, and I, it had a contact number and uh, an email address. And the first thing I did was email actually. And I can't remember who I emailed and that person, I think it was someone on the team, the treatment team did get back to me, but I was too scared um, to call. I just, it was sort of that section of uh, moving into a treatment program where you're like toying with the idea, um, but you haven't really made that decision yet. And then I had a really bad series of days back to back to back with my eating disorder and binging. And I felt completely out of control. And I decided to call Brightheart that day. I'd called in sick to work. And I talked to you, Jonathan. Um, and That day is a pivotal moment for me. Because it was the day that I decided to reach out and I didn't know what to expect. And I got one of the kindest and most compassionate people I've ever spoken to. Who took me in that moment of vulnerability and talked to me and listened to me and encouraged me to hang in there and seek hope and seek treatment. And just in that phone call, I went from the deepest place that I've ever been in my eating disorder 
to feeling like there could be a way for me to get better. And it was, it was a conversation I won't forget because it didn't feel clinical, even though I've done many, many intake appointments and phone calls with many different therapists over the years. They were still the same questions that I think everyone has to ask, but at the same time, I felt like there was a group out there that was looking to help people who were in a situation that was really dangerous, where they needed help for something serious and they didn't have access to it. And I could feel that. And I got off the phone that night and I remember you know, my voice feeling shaky like it is now, but I felt that sense of that first step had been taken. And from that point, it was just a, a sort of series of collaboration. That's, a, I guess, a really good word for Bright Heart in general is there's so much collaboration, talking to the different people who work either in the office or on the team as therapists and going through and meeting all of the directors or the different therapists that I needed to in order to determine if this was a good fit. And that really meant a lot to me as well, that it wasn't an intake and then you get shuttled into this program. Um, I met with several different people, extremely well-known people in the industry that I was sort of floored to be speaking to face to face, like Vicki Burkus, like, you know, I, I had spent many years reading about treatment and, and recovery and I'd read some of her work and then to be talking to her about a program that she's a part of was mind-blowing and I was doing this all for my home um, and then sort of navigating that that path to see if this was a good fit for me and that seemed to be just as important to the team as it was to me that it wasn't just about helping people it was to help people who could be helped by bright heart was the sense that I got. And I think that it is a certain kind of person who, who is right for intensive outpatient and then other people might need hospitalization, which is different. And so there was really a lot of kind of vetting to see where I was and what I was dealing with. And I had never been in a treatment program. So I was being asked all of these questions, very specific to eating disorders that helped me realize just how tailored the approach was going to be. Um, and that was really encouraging because I was super nervous. I had never done any sort of group treatment or intensive treatment. I had only done one-on-one -on -one therapy. Um, and so over the, a couple of weeks, things with my insurance were getting sorted out and um, I was sort of preparing myself for group and I did not know what to expect at all. Um, I, like I said, I've never done any kind of group therapy, eating disorder or otherwise. And so I knew that it was going to be telemedicine, um, but I didn't know much more than that. And I felt pretty comfortable with the, the medium. Um, I think that I just sort of been around technology enough that I was open to it. And I think that was a really important part of that first night was that I was open to whatever shape this group therapy was going to take through telemedicine. Um, even though I had never done anything other than, you know, like the casual Skype phone call with family. Um, so that first night I was really nervous and I, you know, sat down at my desk <laughs> thinking that that was a good idea, not realizing that I'd be sitting in that chair for three hours. <laughs> and the, the screen popped on and there was Lois, you know, and she was clearly heading the group. Like, even though we all occupy um, what one of the other patients call our Brady Bunch squares, <laughs> these little squares on the screen, you know, um, it was clear that Lois was in charge and she sort of like introduced herself and talked to everyone as they came in because people come in over the course of a couple of minutes. And, um, and I was really nervous. It felt like walking into, you know, a, anytime you walk into a situation where everyone knows everyone else, you sort of have that anxiety. Um, but instantly it was taken care of. Lois, the counselor, talked about her background and she's exceptional through Skype or, you know, video type um, therapy. She has, I think she even has a background training in it. Um, 
but she introduced everyone else and then kind of we all talked about ourselves and one of the things that really helped me instantly is that we can only see each other from our shoulders up and as someone who's struggled with an eating disorder the first thing i do when i see somebody is look them up and down and it's a really hard habit to break and you start comparing yourself against them who's the thinnest in the room the heaviest the prettiest the oldest the youngest whatever but through this, you're really only seeing people's shoulders up and you can't really make as many assumptions because you're not seeing as much. And it allows you to be a little bit more involved in the discussion and what's actually the, the heart of the subject matter instead of thinking about who is looking however which way. And I think that that's incredible. Like if group therapy in person could somehow do that, I think it would help them. Um, but we, so we introduced ourselves and there were a couple of members of the group who had been there for quite some time, but they instantly said things that were welcoming, um, and, and said, you know, like they involved me in the conversation or they asked me questions or they would remember something that I had said earlier in the group session. So you felt like they were listening to you. And that's the nature of the group. It's a community. It's a very small, tight knit, almost family where we all look out for each other in a way. Like if somebody is doing something that you know, you've talked to them before in the past few weeks and it's that they're, they're working on for their treatment, we talk to each other candidly and, and bring that up. And so it's, it's like a, in a sense, we're all sort of like co-therapists. I mean, there's clearly someone who has the deeper training in it, but we're all able to talk to one another and share and, um, and find common ground, which is something I never had. I don't openly talk about my eating disorder. And so I didn't often find myself in a situation where someone said, yeah, I go through that every day or could relate to me. And that was really empowering to know that I had this space for 11 hours a week where there were people like me and the rest of my life, I still struggled and, you know, felt that weight of my eating disorder but in those hours i got to put that down on the table with everyone else and we could kind of start working on taking it apart and in you know the last 10 weeks or so that i've been in in group therapy with brightheart i've seen more improvement than i've seen in over five years of therapy with with great therapists who really did help me grow in so many other aspects of my mental health, but the eating disorder really, I couldn't crack. Um, and with the support, it's been extremely helpful. Um, some of the, the other things that I had never encountered was working with a treatment team. I always had one person and now there are you know, three therapists and a nutritionist or a dietitian, and everybody has their strengths. And so I can talk to one person about my meals and, and food specifically, and they can give me really detailed information and feedback and guidance there. Whereas I can talk to someone else about dialectical behavior therapy, and that's their specialty, and they can give me feedback on that. And everyone has a different style on the treatment team. And so you just get this really diverse approach that doesn't really give your eating disorder a chance <laughs> because no matter where it's trying to weasel its way back into your life as you address one section, there's someone there who's an expert on taking care of that. And so, you know, it's this, it's sort of fascinating and empowering to see yourself grow and um, be able to fight back and stand up for yourself. And not only that, then you have on top of your treatment team, you have the other clients and group who are sharing what's working for them. And then you can implement that. And we do, we'll say things like, you know, I used that skill you talked about on Tuesday today and it worked or we'll text each other. And that's another part of group is that in this family unit, we've sort of created, we've all shared, you know, agreed to share our personal phone numbers. And so we text message each other. And if we're out and about and struggling, we'll reach out. And it's, it just makes it that much easier. It's not like you have to call your sponsor, like Alcoholics Anonymous style, you know, and, and talk to them and they have to be available. You can text 
like sometimes we do group texts and so you're texting five or six people and somebody will usually respond in just a few minutes and you know that they care about you because we all have families and jobs and responsibilities but we'll take that time to just say like i'm in a meeting i'm going to text you when i get out or anything and then you know someone is there for you um and that has been really huge for me um and it's it's an investment of time especially to do this you are spending you know it's it's like taking on another job um and it's it's emotionally exhausting at times but it's so rewarding because every single time you go into that group setting you have an opportunity to work on something that you're struggling with that day or even the day before because you're seeing each other almost every other day and then beyond that you can take things that are really specific to you and work on them with your individual therapist and then even more with your individual nutritionist and so if you go into it with an open mind and being willing to share and talk it can be this amazing eye-opening and like enlightening experience and i think that that's probably my biggest piece of advice is that going into this setting there's some nerves and anxiety and um, self-consciousness and the first thing that i did was start talking even though i was going into a group where i didn't know anybody i joined the conversation because i wanted to make every single minute count and we're all struggling with you know insurance and how long we get and you know or how long our treatment is going to be and, and i wanted to maximize every minute i had and so i started talking and that really helped me i think because my story my personal situation was then put out there for everyone to help me understand and they really do help both the patients and the treatment team the more that they know the more information they have the more that they can help and so i think that if you're open and you contribute to the conversation you'll see the sort of transformation that i've been able to see over the last 10 weeks um, i have for the first time since may 2009 stopped counting calories completely and i truly don't feel like i ever will again i have no desire to because i was able to take that fear and mistrust i had in myself and put my trust in the hands of this group of experts and say okay i don't think i could have ever stopped counting calories just on my own but i can stop and let you take that for me you know and so then i let the nutritionist know what i'm eating and she evaluates it and she lets me know what kind of adjustments or um differences she wants to see in the following week and i think another one of the real perks of this method of treatment is that like you see now i'm sitting on my couch in my house and you may see my cat walk across me earlier and that's you don't get that in an, in an office or in a room in a hospital where you're doing inpatient or outpatient therapy intensive outpatient i'm in my house where i feel comfortable and safe and a little bit protected and so i felt really comfortable sharing you know i'm not worried about a whole lot it's because i'm here and and even things like a lot of us have cats or dogs and they'll hang out with us and it just makes you feel at ease you can sit there and just sort of try to relax and talk to the group about some really tough subjects and even more than that like you aren't for me at least i live in a small town and i do worry about things or i did worry when i was looking for options about you know would i end up in a room with my boss's daughter or son and what would that mean you know what how vulnerable would that make me and in this situation we're all pretty spread out and we there's you know a pretty very very slim chance that we'll run into each other at the grocery store and that's comforting in a way to have that sort of anonymity in treatment and then another thing that i think speaks really 
highly of Bright Heart is the availability of the team. The therapist will often tell us, text me, and if I'm not in an appointment with a client, I'll get back to you because I don't want you to be alone in a time of need. Or email me if you find yourself approaching a situation like a dinner out and you're not really sure what to do and it's Friday and you don't have group, the dietitian has said, email me and I'll get back to you and give you some guidance so that you can go into that weekend trip or that weekend event that's centered around food with a bit of a plan if something kind of comes out of left field like that. And so you just sort of feel like you have a lot of options and connection to everyone who can help you, that there's always like a line open. Um, and even the, the staff in the office who um, just kind of keep the mechanisms in place to, you know, remind you when you need to go get labs from your doctor or anything like that. They're the sweetest, most courteous people who just, you know, will gently reach out and remind you or check in on you. And um, I really appreciate it. It seems like the whole team has been put together with this um, vision in mind and that they represent that, that they're all very much aware of what the culture of Bright Heart is and that they present that very well. It's a very consistent approach and I really appreciate that. Um, and beyond that, I think that <laughs> what I see is just this huge change in myself um, that I didn't think was possible. I thought that I would have to manage of an eating disorder for my entire life and that I would always be on the edge of losing control, that that was sort of the best option, that I could build up my skill sets to manage that level of, of lifestyle. And throughout my treatment, I have stepped away from unhealthy practices. I've been behavior free for over a month, um, more than that probably. And and even though there's still so much to work on, I feel like I'm stronger standing in my shoes now than I've ever been in my entire life and that I have the agency to, to talk to my eating disorder or those sides, that side of me and say, not today, I've got this, I'm strong enough. And I, I know that you've been here to try to help me in some way because of you know whatever coping mechanisms I needed. This was what I chose somehow, but I don't need that anymore because I've, I've built my skills with the support of this team. And so if you are thinking about treatment, I encourage you to make that call, um, even just to talk about it, to consider it, because after you have that conversation with the team or with um, the person who takes your phone call, you'll have a really good sense of what Bright Heart is and what they can do to support you in your path to recovery. And it's creating this specialized approach that I really hope becomes available to more and more people because it's making high quality, high level care available to people who don't otherwise have that option. And I think they're saving lives.